All right. Hello. I'm Natalie of SoHungryHippie.com, and today I have got a short demo for you regarding Frankenfoam. So if you've never heard that term, one of my friends, Michelle, put together a PDF for you, and it explains that perfectly. Basically what it is, is you uh, have all these scraps left over of foam or any other interfacing. I've done it for batting, as far as quilt batting, and I've done it with SF-101. I've even done it with Decoville Light before. So it's taking your scraps and putting them together so that you can build a big enough piece to use for your bag. Okay, so big thanks to Michelle Graham. She is going to put her PDF in my Facebook Makers group so that you have access to it all the time. If you're not over there, you may want to join. You can request to join, and Michelle will help me out approving uh, applications. Not applications, but entries. <laughs> we do that so we keep the weirdness out. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll get right into this demo, and then I do have a few questions to answer and a few things to show you really quick, but we'll keep this Friday Live sesh pretty quick and short today. All right? Hello, everyone. So good to see you all. Hi, Tamara. Uh, let me know how you're doing, of course. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Elizabeth. Yay. So good to see everyone here. All right, I'm going to take you overhead. Let's get in the, into this here. Okay, so first of all, you probably have a piece. There are a couple different ways of doing this. See, I was experimenting already. I, I have employed several different methods, but let me show you first what I think is the best method. Let's say you end up with scraps like this. These edges don't meet, so just like in Michelle's PDF, you're going to layer this over, okay? Layer it over. It's not, we're not doing what you think, probably. You're going to put your acrylic ruler down on top so you can make a really straight cut. Bring in your rotary cutter. Put the blade away. Remove these two pieces. And now you've got a perfectly fitting piece here, okay? Don't worry about the length right now or the tallness. No, I don't think so, Ramal, because I'm going to be going to the machine now. So a couple of different things here. Sometimes I don't feel confident, depending on the machine I'm using, that I can keep these edges together like this as I'm sewing through the machine. I'm going to show you just taking this to the machine and sewing it. But I want to show you another tip. I love this stuff. This one is called Heat Press Batting Together. Quilters fuse batting pieces, blah, blah, blah. There's many different brands on the market. A lot of times what I will do is press this right there. I'll cut a piece. It doesn't have to be super long. And then I'll bring in my iron, hot, and I'll press it on. It fuses. And then your pieces are held together, okay? Now first... I'll do that in a second, but first let me show you this way in case you don't have that on hand. I'm just going to bring this over to the machine. I'm going to place this in here. I've changed my thread to pink and, and black in the bobbin so you can really see what I'm doing. I have a really big zigzag stitch and it's not tight. It's spaced far apart. I don't know if you can pull back any Ramel on this view or not. Maybe not. I was going to show them my settings. Oh, sure. But then again, I don't know if it'll show. It kind of blinks weird on camera. I'm not sure why. That's plenty. So right here, I have my width at 4.7 and my stitch tightness, or how close the threads are together, at 1.7. So it's not a satin stitch. It's not super tight. You'll get pucker, puckers and bumps doing that. So let me show you. I'm going to start here. Make sure you test your needle width so you have the right foot on. What you don't want to do is start with a zigzag and hit your foot and break a needle and shatter it. So safety first. And I'm, I'm just kind of pressing these together slightly as my zigzag is hitting on each side of that gap. Okay, just like this. That's all it's doing. I'm going to show you what this looks like here. I'm going slow. 
so you can see. Just kind of guide it with your hands. You're not pushing too much. You're not pushing it forward. You're just kind of pushing it together. Okay. So here's what it looks like on the front. Here's what it looks like on the back for me, for this machine. Now on my Bernina, it would look more like this on the front too. So you may have to play with it a little bit. But now these pieces are together. And I'm, I'm gonna show you some other samples here because I don't want you to freak out and think you're doing something wrong because you're not. So this one, as you can see, looks really good. Maybe we can tighten in that view. Ramel, zoom in a bit. Yeah. Let's see how close we can get it. Okay, so this one looks really good and even, but this was my first try. And there, there is a little bit of looping. There's some, some issues here. It's not perfect. And I just had to figure out how much uh, my tension on this machine would need to be, which I didn't need to adjust it, but you might have to. And the other thing is how I was pushing them together. I think I was pushing too hard on this one. So it wasn't working great for me. This one was much better, but you couldn't see it well because it's white thread. And so now here's this way, okay? So let's do another way. I'm gonna cut these apart. And we're gonna, we're gonna do this, okay? The pieces don't match. What do we do? We layer, we make a clean cut. Put your blade away, get those out of the way. Bring it together. Now, I'm gonna bring over my Aliso mini iron. I have more of these arriving any day now in case you wanna get one. The reason I use my mini in the demos is because it heats up so fast. Oh, I always use it on Hell's Gate, you know. <laughs> Full blast, high heat. <laughs> That's what I do, that's how I roll. So I'm gonna bring this over, and listen, I don't want anyone getting snarky with me about having my ironing mat on my cutting board. I do know better. I, knew, I do know that it can warp the mat, but I don't have time to be dealing with that right now. Okay, so here are my pieces, and they're together, Ramel, can you zoom in? And then I've cut my piece of tape. This is called batting tape. Sometimes I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to cut it down a little more because I don't want to get this bumpy adhesive side on my wool mat. Too expensive to be messing up. And I'm just going to press it. This is on full heat. Make sure that your pieces are together all the way. Now if you didn't get it perfectly, you might have to start again. You'll just lift, push it together, and you can try to refuse. Sometimes that'll work. Sometimes you'll need a new piece of tape. Okay, that one worked. Now, if I'm doing a really expensive bag, I'm gonna do it on this side too, no joke. If I'm using like really nice vinyl, and this is gonna be a masterpiece in my own head, then I'm gonna do both sides just for extra security. Oh, yeah. I, can, I can get it in, Tamara, pretty quick. And I didn't order it yet because I'm gonna show you another way to do this in just a second. And I want you guys to let me know, do you want this heat and press tape? You get quite a bit on a roll and I think it retails around 15 or $16, but it'll last you a while and you can use it with batting and other interfacings if you want to. Okay, so here's this piece. Now, you don't have to zigzag stitch this now. This will hold it. It really will, I've done it this way. If you wanted to come in and zigzag stitch again, you're not wrong, go ahead, whatever floats your boat. I'm gonna show you what I do though. I cut a piece of SF 101, shape flex, whatever you want to call it. 
and I make, let's pretend my piece, I'm going to cut it down to size so you can really see what I mean. So let's say my bag pattern piece is this, okay? I'm going to cut my shape flex enough to cover the whole thing, okay? So the bumpy side, the adhesive side of the shape flex goes down on top of the foam, and now we're giving everything a really nice smooth surface, and this will last and last and last. This will not come apart. You've got two layers of adhesive bonding those pieces of foam together, and you don't have to worry about it now. Now, if you want to do this side, you can. I usually don't, okay, because the, I'm, I just don't. I just don't. One layer of SF-101 on the side that's going to be facing outward is plenty. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to use this baby diarrhea color because I'll never use this. <laughs> I will never use this color fabric. I'm going to sew it to this piece and show you the smoothness, how you cannot see your seam. And my fabric has a little bit of a wrinkle in it. I'm just going to use some platter so you don't think that that's my my join. All right, so I'm smoothing this down. Let me show you this. I always do this when I'm making a bag. I, oh, what did she say? What did Jackie say? I, I left my Alyssa mini on all night the other night. Oh, my God, Jackie. Oh, my God. Don't do that. I don't want your house to burn down. <laughs> it is tricky with the Alyssa. You, it's not self-shut off, so you might want to set yourself a timer. No judgment in that. Gosh. Okay, see how smooth that is? Let me base this edge for you real quick. This is exactly what I would do um, if I was making a bag and I w if I was using a quilting cotton for my exterior. This is exactly what I do and I have done. So I'm just going to base this real quick. Oh, it's speckled from Ruby Star, but it's just not in my favorite color, so that's why I'm using this as a scrap. I'm going to speed this up. This is Natalie's speed. See how smooth it is? And I'm going through all the layers. I'm going through the foam, the SF-101, the tape, where that tape strip is, and the fabric. Just gives a really classy, smooth result. Now what I don't do is I don't recommend that you do this without your SF-101. And I'll tell you why. I have done some bags in the past where I put the fabric directly on the foam. And sometimes I've basted it, and sometimes I've spray adhesed it and basted it. And sometimes I just get some wrinklage in the fabric, and it shows, and it, you can't get it out. I don't know what that is. So I really recommend use the tools that will help you have a great result. And one of them is ShapeFlex SF-101, whatever you want to call that. Either name is fine. It works. I re okay. So there's that. Wonder Under Tape Eva is adhesive on both sides. Um, so it, you can't, it, you'd have to fuse it all at one time. But you know what? You try it and let us know. This tape, I find, is just easier to work with because you can get that seam really tight and then fuse the tape down. I think Wonder Under is a little bit more expensive too. But you know what? I've been known to be wrong sometimes. <laughs> so go ahead and do your thing. OK, so the next way I'm going to show you here Oh, yeah, bring them. Bring them. Yeah, use up your scrap pieces, Tina.
can save a lot of money. Can you do that with lots of little pieces to create a larger piece? Yes, Barbara, you can. But what I, you know, I don't recommend, let me take you overhead. Oops, I hit the wrong pedal. What I don't think is super great is if you have, a, let's say, a Santorini tote piece and that's a large bag right I don't recommend you do this and try to make like tiny tiny pieces for that whole big panel because I would never want it to have less strength in areas because it's a big bag now what would be great to use these little pieces for is something like a zipper pouch or an easy zipper case or an essential oils case so this is this size I would have no problem fusing all these pieces like this and some more here and then doing the tape and then doing the layer of SF 101 and then my fabric no problem because this is a small bag and it's not going to get that much stress you know it's not like there's big straps on it being slung over your shoulder and all that kind of thing so just use your personal discretion play around experiment Remember, if something fails, it's not you. It's just a method and a skill that you have to work on and hone. It's, it's nothing wrong with you, so don't feel that way. Okay, go ahead. Love it. How do you get a fold wrinkle out of the foam? Good question. So you would take your iron on high heat, full blast, and put some water in it, and then steam the foam. If you, and you'd hover right above it and steam the heck out of it. You could also try squirting it with water bottle if you don't have a steam iron and then pressing it. But yeah, this foam, it's polyester and it's got other fibers in it. So you can definitely steam and press this to get any wrinkles out. Great question. Okay, thank you for the feedback. Oh, awesome, you're welcome. Hate it when I almost miss a Friday. Me too. Don't miss us. Um, okay, so I think I think that's what I have. Oh, I want to show you guys. <clears throat> I keep a big bag like this of all my scraps of foam. I never throw this stuff away. It's too expensive, right? Uh, so I will keep these. And sometimes, like if it's a piece like this, I know I can get a zipper pouch out of this, so I, I won't cut that up. But then I'll be left with something weird over here, let's say like this much. But again, I'll just franken foam it, and it's fine. It's great. So don't throw away what you can probably use. However, here's my caveat. If you have a bunch of stuff in your sewing room and it's weighing you down, you need to donate some stuff so you feel better, so you feel happy when you're in your sewing room. And elementary schools, middle schools, they're all looking for donations like that, fabric and interfacing and all. So it's worth a phone call. I've done it more than one time. Yeah, if it doesn't bring you joy. <laughs> so no judgment if you're like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh, another thing I do use uh, Guterman thread on this when I do that because you guys know it works in my machine really well I just recommend that you try a poly blend thread because it tends to be a little stronger if you're having trouble and you're using all cotton or a really fine thread just try a different spool get some you know go to a big box store with all with your big coupon and buy a di bunch of different kinds and see what is working in your machine and for you there's no problem in that at all. Uh, let's see here. We do have a bunch of eggshell Guterman that just came in. 500 meter spools, which will last you a little while. More than a little while. Okay, so I think that's that. If you see any more questions, let me know, Ramel. Okay, sounds good. I did want to mention Curio from Melody Miller is in stock right now but it's going fast and I don't believe I'll be able to reorder a lot of these prints okay so the moths I know that the the, 
the blue or tealish moths. All these colors have different names and I can never remember. But some of the moths are close to being out. So if you want those, scoot on over. Um, one of the prints, this tile print, I just really love. And I think that the photos never do it justice. If you saw Instagram yesterday, Kim posted on my feed a, a really awesome video clip of a collection of fabric. It's worth going to look because it just looks really cool. So this one, this is tile. And as you can see, it's like super retro and it's these tiny little flowers in this sort of Moroccan tile shape. Just, sure. It reminds me of like a 1971 kitchen. I love it. So if you have any questions about any of the fabric, I'm doing my best to try and take short little video clips and put them in the listings. It's just that with so much arriving every day, it's proving really hard to do that. <laughs> oh, and I did want to mention another thing. Because of the birthday sale that we had last weekend, we were running a few days behind, and I really apologize. We had everybody on deck helping, and some orders just went out later than they normally would. But that's any time I think that there's some kind of sale that happens. So I'm, I apologize for that, but trust your order is on the way. If an order is not the, on the way, check to see if you have a pre-order in there. Because our policy is anything with a pre-order in it will not ship. You would have to make special arrangements with me either in the notes at checkout or an email if you would like the in-stock items first, okay? So that's why I have it highlighted in yellow on those pre-order listings. Please order separately from in-stock items because then we'll ship that in-stock item right away, those items right away. Uh, and the pre-order will sit there until that fabric is in. And again, that's only for that special fabric. And uh, you know, it, some of it has already sold out and the Tula, it's not even gonna be here until July. So, <sighs> it is what it is. <laughs> okay, let's see, I've got that down on the list. One inch leather straps are in and listed in the store. I will have the photos up today. Right now it says photo coming soon. Um, but it'll be happening, they are in. I brought back light brown, we have dark brown and black. And my straps are completely sewable. What that means is, well you can't see it because it's too low. Uh, what that means is these straps you can completely sew in, you know, with a box, with a X mark in a box, with into the seam, I've sewn them right into the seam, no problem. You don't need hardware for these straps. Now, if you want to use hardware, they work with hardware, like rivets and rings and all kinds of stuff. So, oh yeah, that is nice. It's, it's rare we combine orders, honestly. We have so many people in the shipping doing it that it doesn't flag or show us if somebody has two or three or four separate orders. So if you get four packages, it's just the way it came up, so. Sorry, <laughs> wish we could do that. It's just too time consuming trying to click into that every time, right, Ramel? Um, but if we see it and if we can, we will, of course, always. Yes. Uh, love your leather straps. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Tamara. Yeah, I really enjoy them because they look classy and nice, and yet they're easy to work with. Okay, so I think we've covered all of that. Oh, a quick reminder regarding customer service, email, our responses, you might want to check your spam and junk folders because it's not always my email responding. Sometimes it's our AI or our customer service team that is virtual and everyone has their own email uh, with So Hungry Hippie in it, of course. So for instance, Michelle is michelle at SoHungryHippie.com. So just check there first if you think we haven't responded. I'm sure we have. Okay, are we ready to get to the winner? As always, we draw a winner every week from somebody that watched the previous week. 
please email me Lynn, congrats, and we will get your prize out to you ASAP. Awesome. All right, so I think that's it. Thank you guys for being here. I hope it was nice and short, and I will see you next week. We have lots of stuff arriving. <laughs> Thank you.